Hey guys and fellow whiskey lovers, I'm Leon and this is Malt Mariner's Whiskey Roads. Today the whiskey road will take us to India. So India is a really, really interesting country uh, if you like whiskey, especially if you like single malt. What many people don't know is that India is one of the most whiskey producing and whiskey consuming countries in the world. Actually, for a long time it is or it was the most whiskey producing and consuming country in the world. If you look into the Malt Whiskey Yearbook, a book that I would very much rec recommend if you want to be updated on malt whiskey distilleries, um, you'll always find in the back the, the rating of basically the most consumed whiskies in the world. And I, <coughs> sorry, got a little hair in my, in my mouth. Um, and I think this is really interesting in terms of um, the numbers you will get here, because what many people don't really know and what I was found always very uh, exciting, the first time I bought this, I was like, is this really true? Um, the most um, sold whiskey in the world is McDowell's, which is an Indian whiskey. The second most sold whiskey in the world is Royal Stag, also an Indian whiskey. The third one, surprisingly, an Indian whiskey, <laughs> offers its choice. The fourth one, Imperial Blue, which is also an Indian whiskey. And only then you'll find Johnny Walker Scotch whiskey. So Jim Beam, Johnny Walker, these guys, the big guys, they're not actually the biggest brands in the world. It is Indian whiskey. But most Indian whiskies you'll find in the world are not really exported outside of India. And maybe that's not a bad thing because most of those whiskies would probably not be classified as whiskey in other whiskey drinking countries. I am in Germany, so I'm in Europe. And in Europe, we have a very strict rule about three years aging minimum and so on. It has to be fermented mash and it has to be distilled and it has to be aged in cask for three years. So when it comes to Indian whiskey, there has always been two brands that I quite liked. It was Amrut and Paul John. And these whiskies are really, really interesting and very good. And now I will present to you a third one that I will try. Now it's the Indri whiskey. It's the Trini, the three wood, basically. So I have tried this whiskey before with a friend of mine in a German video, but I will try it again because I personally think this is interesting enough to give it a recap for you guys on the English channel. Um, the first thing that come to mind when I got this bottle, it's a present by the way, I got this from the importer, a little sip, not the whole bottle, full disclosure by, uh, to full disclosure obviously, so this is branded as, this video will be branded as advertisement because I got something for free from the company who's distributing this. Thanks a lot to Bastian who for giving me this on the bottle market exhibition in Bremen. What I really like about this is it says right on the label, non-chill filtered and non-colored. So this is really good. Very good for um, the nerds. I like these kind of things. And on the back, they actually give you a batch number also very nice for the nerds who want to know which batch you are drinking. Um, so this is like a, we don't really know much about the maturation, I think. Oh, actually, though, yes, obviously we, we do. They said this is ex-bourbon cask, ex-French oak, no, ex-French wine cask, and PX Ferry cask. So a very nice combination of three different types of cask. Obviously, three wood makes sense. It is 46 ABV and, like I said, non-colored. And um, before we come to the nice second, the second nice point, I'll give you a sniff, I'll give you a taste, and um, yeah, then we'll talk about the other thing that I think is quite interesting. So this is a very exotic whiskey. It's very far away from a Scotch whiskey. It's very far away from a standard single malt whiskey. Um, I think this smells very, very um, sweet, almost like in a chemical kind of way, like um, candy, like gummy bears, like um, almost a little bit of, of glue, like, you know, kind of if you're like a bourbon drinker, you might find this much more approachable if, as if you are a single malt Scotch whiskey drinker and are very sensitive to these kind of gluey um, flavors. But it is very sweet and there's some malt in there, some caramel, some honey, some, some sort of like artificial honey as well, some bee wax and some, some candied fruit like papaya or 
pineapple. So this is a very ex exotic whiskey. And this to me is the definition of an exotic whiskey. So if you do a whiskey tasting around the world, for example, and you want to showcase different countries, this would be a very interesting thing to do, to put this whiskey in a tasting to show people how Indian whiskey tastes. Cheers. Talking about the taste. So on the tongue, it starts classic um, single malt flavors, vanilla, honey, caramel. And then on the back of the finish, uh, on the finish at the back of your tongue, um, you will get much more exotic flavors. Then there is the tropical fruits is back, like a bit of pina colada almost, like a coconut flavor, something um, very fruity. And the finish is very light. It's very quick. It's not like it's, it's going away quickly, but it's very smooth and easy as well. I said this in a German video, it all, almost reminds me of a very, very well-made vodka. Like there's no burn. The, the aftertaste is very easy, very sippy. Um, yeah, this is really good. And now to the second point that I really like about this whiskey. In Germany, we pay 40 euros for this. You guys in the UK will pay roughly about 34 to 35 pound. And in America, uh, United States, I found the price tag of $57. So I think this is a very good whiskey, um, very good value for money. Uh, quite easy to drink and it's approachable enough to showcase it's an Indian whiskey. It's far away it's f far away enough from scotch to, to show you exotic notes, but it's still in the flavor profile of a whiskey. I think this makes a few steps towards rum because it's it's much like like a, a sweeter rum. It's um, it's much sweeter I think than than classical single malts from Scotland. Um, but it's also very, um, yeah, very fruity. But the fruits are in the flavor camp of sort of artificial, artificial fruits. So if you're sensitive about these kind of things, you might not be very happy with this. I personally think this is a very well-made whiskey, a very nice whiskey. And yeah, we don't really know how old it is. Um, India has a very rapid climate, so the maturation will be a bit quicker. Usually whiskeys from this region tend to taste older than they actually are, because from the quicker maturation, the cask will give the whiskey more color and flavor in a, in a shorter amount of time. Pardon. So yeah, that's it. That's the Indri uh, Trini. And we also had... Mm, the cask strength version this is the drew um this has 57.2 percent 101.1 proof um this was also very interesting very nice uh, it's a fully matured and uh, bourbon cask so that was almost like a spicy curry like a very sweet curry like like uh, mango chutney so i really like this one as well um very intense, quite hot on the flavors, and I'm pretty sure these whiskies will be very good whiskies for the summer. So if you want to try an exotic whiskey for the summer for a good price point, feel free to uh, grab yourself a bottle of Indri. I personally think that this is worth um, worth a shot, worth uh, you buy buying that, as long as you are familiar and um, as long as you are kind of in the area of liking these kind of exotic whiskies, if you're not very sensitive about um, these flavors, like a bit of glue in the nose, a bit of like almost gummy, like gum or plasticky notes so, sort of, but they're in the back, they're not really strong, they're not, they're no off notes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so if you like Kavalan, for example, if you like, if you have tried Amrut or Paul John, if you have tried all these kind of whiskies, then I'm pretty sure you will like this as well. Okay. So that's basically my video for about Indri. Um, yeah, about just quick, uh, I just remembered uh, the master blender for the distillery used to work for Amrut, so that actually makes a lot of sense that the knowledge is here uh, shifted around in India as well, so that makes sense, but it is a good sign for the distillery and it's a pretty big distillery. So I think that they will make, they will continue to make whiskey and we will hear much more from Indri in the future. I'm pretty sure about that. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried Indian whiskey before and yes, if you liked it and no, do you want to try it? And I think Indri is a very good starting point, obviously, as is Amrut and Paul John. I will include some pictures of the bottles that I think are worth your, uh, worth your time. 
um, from the other distilleries as well. But I think this one was very, very nice and very approachable. And that's basically for today, our journey through India. And uh, yeah, I'll see you down the road.